So today I want to show you how I use perplexity.ai, an AI-based search engine, and ChatGPT, and Claude 2 to create amazing blog posts for my website. Uh, I'm going to walk through. The reason we use all three tools is, first and foremost, I need some facts and I need to be able to work on those. And as you may or may not know, ChatGPT and Claude 2 don't have direct internet access without additional plugins. But Perplexity.ai is an amazing search engine and it works much like Google, except that instead of just giving you the links, it actually gives you the answers that you want and then gives you the links to go reference. Hugely powerful. So let me show you how I'm going to go ahead and use this. And I am going to use a ChatGPT plugin as well to help in that process. And that plugin is their web pilot plugin uh, that should be available for everybody. So let's go ahead and take a look and walk through. And today I'm going to create a sample blog post about something that I don't necessarily know anything about whatsoever. And we're going to go ahead and pick the topic of roofing in this case. And we're going to assume that I'm a roofing company trying to write a great blog post to talk about the roofing services that we offer. And I'm going to go ahead and pick an area and we're just going to use, um, let's try, oh, how about Pensacola, Florida? Random enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start first with a, a query into perplexity to talk about that. So tell me about operating a roofing company. in Pensacola, Florida. Probably should have picked a name I could spell easier. We're going to start generic and we're going to grab this information and feed it in. So let's take a look. Obviously, as you can see from sources, it's looking at things like Angie's List, Pensacola Roofing, Expertise.com, some local sites, Freeman Roofing, Yelp, uh, Buckworthy Roofing. So great stuff here. Um, and this is giving me now facts from those sites. And you can see it's even got links. So it's telling me that this competition thing came from Angie's List. Let's look for something from Freeman Roofing, a number four. Uh, there we are down here. So hiring employees, this aspect came from Freeman Roofing. Others, let's see, I know we had a number two up there for Pensacola Roofing. You can see it was used for talking here about creating a website. It was talking here about uh, following after completing a job. So some good information. I'm going to go ahead and take that information and I'm going to go ahead and throw that into um, a clipboard here real quick. So let's just create a new doc. We'll just pop into Google Docs real quick and throw this into here make it super easy. Notice when I paste that in, it's in markdown format. That's fine. Um, the chat GPT will know what to do with that. And it does have my citations down there as well. So let's, let's get just a little bit more information and talk about how can I pick, let's say as a homeowner, that's who we want to write this blog to in this case, how can I pick the best roofing company in Pensacola, Florida? Actually, let's not even worry about Pensacola, Florida. Let's just say, how can I pick the best roofing company? So again, we're getting some different sites here that it's referencing. It's going ahead and, and actually looking at those sites and giving us information. It's one of the things I love about Perplexity. Let's go ahead and take that and paste that into my document as well. There we go. Oops, did it get paste it? I don't think it pasted it. Let's try that again. Copy it to the clipboard, go back to my document, and paste it. We seem to be missing it there. Let's try one other way. It should be working, but it's not. There we go. Sometimes computers just being computers. All right. So now the other thing I love about perplexity is, and again, we're creating background information at this point in time. We're going to use for this blog post. Uh, what are important factors to consider when choosing a roofing company? How can I check roofing company's credentials? These are good. So let's take a look at this. What are the most important factors to consider when choosing a roofing company? Again, I'm planning on writing a blog post here promoting a specific roofing company. I don't have one, so it'll be fictitious. And we're going to obviously talk about how to how they compete and why they'd be a good fit. So we'll go ahead and over here for this. Let's paste that in as well. And let's go back. There was one other question here that I thought was good. Um, let's just, let's not be negative. I forget what the other one was. It's gone now. So we're, that's all right. We've got good information. So now I've got all this information here that I can use. I'm going to simply copy and paste all of that. And I'm going to go over to chat GPT. 
So uh, first thing I want to do is I want to enable the plugins. And yes, this does require the paid version. Uh, if not, uh, you can certainly give it, but you're going to lose a little bit of the value. And I want to make sure that I've got, in particular here, I can turn off Kayak. I don't need that. But I want to make sure I have the Web Pilot plugin installed and turned on. That's going to give ChatGPT the ability to go out and look for different things. But let's begin by saying I want to write a blog post promoting how a homeowner can choose the best roofing company in their area. My company is ABC, and I'm just making this up, ABC Roofing in Pensacola, Florida. Please give me five possible titles, speak possible compelling titles for this blog post. Again, I'm not just going to walk in and ask ChatGPT to go ahead and just give me a blog post. I want it to give me some information, and I want it to give me some break this down. We call this chain prompting or prompt chaining, where we put a bunch of prompts together. So let's see what it gives us here. Um, I like the top tips to select the best roofing company in Pensacola. Why ABC Roofing stands out. That's good. Uh, ABC Roofing's guide, to, yeah, that's all right. But again, we're going to assume we're in Pensacola at this point, point. Um, and this number three is not bad either, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go number one. I kind of like that. So let's take number one. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to go down here and say, let's use title number one. And then I'm going to remind it what that was. Based on this title and the following information, please provide me with an outline for a comprehensive blog post on this topic. And I'll learn how to spell comprehensive properly. And let's go ahead now and give it that information from our Google Doc. And information. We'll call it reference information, just so it might have an idea of what I'm doing here. And I'm literally just going to paste that in. And let's go ahead and see what it does here. So this will take just a second. I am going to run the video and let it just show you everything as we go along. I know that'll take a little bit longer, but you guys can fast forward if you want. And you can see here now we're getting a, a nice layout of introduction. They're going to talk about roofing in Pensacola. They're making that important, dealing with licensing, insurance, talking about competition, uh, emphasis on online presence. They're going to talk about pricing strategies. So far, this all looks really good. By the way, it's important to review this as ChatGPT is putting this out. You want to make sure it's relevant. Sometimes it will find things that you don't want to include, and then you can make sure in our next step as we put the blog post together that you exclude those specific things. So, uh, again, it's using that at reference information, creating a very comprehensive outline here, as you can see, about what to do. Now talking about recommendations and reviews and licensing insurance verification, the importance of getting multiple estimates, checking references, uh, and then they're going to end here with why ABC Roofing stands out. Now, in this case, this is a fictitious company. So everything it's going to put in here is either going to be related to roofing companies in general or it's going to be what we call hallucinating, making things up. If you're doing this about your company, make sure that this information is correct. One of the things I would have done had ABC Roofing had a website, I would have inserted a prompt prior to this saying, please review my website. I would have given it the URL or possibly used perplexity to give me that. And I had it summarize that information so it could reference that as it talked about ABC Roofing. So we're pretty good here. Uh, and then it's going to even ask a call to action and all this. We're going to go ahead and run with this right now. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to just say go ahead and just let's take this as it sits and write the whole blog post. We could, but we're not going to get the content that we want because it's going to take too much. So we've got, let's see here, a total of seven sections. And I'm just going to say... Please begin to, well, let's say, please write this 
blog post targeting homeowners in Pensacola, Florida. Begin by writing, well, let's say, we'll just say, oh, no, we'll do it here. Begin by writing section one of the outline and its subsections. So again, we're going to do this seven separate times. I'm going to go back up here to my blog post. So while that's thinking, I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Let's go back to my document here. We'll create a new document. And I'm just going to paste my outline in here. And I'm going to quickly grab my title and put that up here. So there we go. That's my title. There's my outline. And let's go ahead and go back and see how we're doing. It's thinking and going through. So far, good. We'll let this continue to work through. Now, if there's any facts that are brought up in here, like I'm not seeing anything, but if let's say it brought up the, the population of Pensacola or whatever, I'd want to validate that before I use it. Um, while I want to trust it, you got to verify your facts, and I'd use perplexity to do this. In this case, it's using information that it has, and, and so far it looks really good. So I'm not going to have to change anything. And again, now it's talking about the various strategies here. Maybe go, why don't we want to talk about the power of marketing? Well, let's say that we look at the segment and we determine we don't want that. Um, that's, that's fine. We can do that. In this case, we, can, we could delete it. But in this case, we're writing to homeowners. And I think it's important to, to showcase to a homeowner that there is, it's powerful to make sure that the company they choose has an online presence and that it, that, what that means. So very, very important. So again, we're, we're going through. Notice this is just for section one. So, okay, there we go. It's giving us a nice kind of a, a foreshadowing of the next one. And I'll say now write section two and its subsections. And while that's going, I'm going to go copy this. By the way, if you go up to the top, you'll see it's got a nice little copy button. You can just click on that. I can now go over and start a new page here. And there's my blog. By the way, if you see this is coming in in markdown format, if you'd rather have that in HTML or something you can paste into another document, you can go to markdown to HTML. Let me find the website here real quick. There we go. It's literally markdown to HTML. And I can paste that in here. And now I'm going to get a formatted version that I can put into my document. So let's go ahead and replace what I just did with that formatted version. That looks a little bit better. Depending on whether you're using it or not, you may want to use that. By the way, if you use WordPress for your blog, you can paste Markdown directly into WordPress as editor, and it will format it for you, and, and that's a great way to do it. Let's see how we're doing on Section 2 here. Just finishing up. There we go. So let's go ahead and take a quick look. Doing a very quick look while I'm on the video, but that looks reasonable, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add that in. Let's go back to the Markdown Converter. Copy that over to my blog post, and we'll go ahead and add that in. Now I'm going to go back to ChatGPT. I'm going to do the same thing. We said now write section two. Now we're going to have it write section three. And as you can see where we're going, we're going to continue this process for each of the sections until we're done. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video for a minute because you probably don't want to watch me go through each step of this, and I'll be back as soon as we're done with the video. All right, so we're back and the blog is finished. We've gone ahead and got each of the sections in there. I'll quickly scroll down through. You can see all of those in there. And that even included our conclusion, a call to action, and citations. Now, a couple of things I'm going to want to do here. One, I probably don't want to call a call to action. I'm probably going to want to change this. So let's just say what to do next. I'm going to do that, and for citations, I'm good. But there may be a couple of these that I want to get rid of because maybe these are competitors. So I'm going to re get rid of that one. Uh, let's see. We'll get rid of that specific pencil. We'll get rid of the Freemans as well. They may be a great company, but again, if they're a competitor, I don't want them in there. Yelp's going to be good to have in there, though. That's good. Buckworth's Roofing Tips, we'll get rid of that one. We've got a nice government one here for uh, that. Let's get rid of uh, Bill Reagan. And again, you might want to check these. If they're not local competitors, I'd keep them in there. 
Uh, Mike Holmes, obviously, is national or international. He's out of Canada, so that's not going to be a problem. Angie's tip. And then new look. Let's go ahead and get rid of that one as well. So just like that, we've still got five citations, and that's great. And that adds additional credibility by doing that. So the, it's almost done. Now, you may say, Jonathan, that looks pretty good. I want to do two more things, and I highly recommend this. Now that it's done, I want to ask you to write a key takeaway section. So please write a key takeaways section based on the entire article that you have written. I misspelled takeaways, I realize that, but I think it'll work. Let's find out. Yep, it figured it out. And it's going to go ahead and do that. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to ask it to write frequently asked questions. So I generally ask it for five, and I'm going to ask it to write five frequently asked questions and answers. Okay, I'm going to pause the video while this is going on because we're already at almost 17 minutes, and I'll be back as soon as that's done and show you how it worked. All right, so we're back, and the key takeaway section is done. You can see that. That's I asked it to write the key takeaways based upon the entire article. And then I asked it to write an FAQ section with five questions from this article that homeowners might have and the answers. I went ahead and formatted that, pasted that all over here. I brought the key takeaway section right to the beginning, right after the introduction part, where I'd like to have that appear. I then went ahead and added the FAQs near the end, right before the conclusion. So we got everything in order, and there we go. We got a beautiful article. Let's see how long this turned out to be. Again, you want to read this through. I'm not going to do that for the video here, um, but let's take a look at word count. So 2,357 words. That's a good length. If you're writing blog posts that are 500 words nowadays in 2023, you're missing out. That's not enough in order to answer the questions that Google wants you to answer in order to be seen as an expert in your niche. So I want to read through this. The other thing that I do is you'll notice here, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. You'll notice we see some red underlining and stuff like that. Uh, I use a tool called Grammarly, and it's another AI-based tool that's checking my grammar. As a general rule, I want to go through and probably take all the items that are underlined in red, that means there's some sort of grammatical problem, and try to fix those so that uh, we can go. Um, so in this case, it's not always right, so we want to double-check things as we go through and verify. But that's something I would take the time to do. But now I've got this post ready to go. It can be pasted. I'm likely going to go out to Mid Journey and, and write a prompt uh, to go ahead and create an image for this. So I'll use and we're ready to go. I hope this has been helpful. If you have questions about how to do this or anything else, don't hesitate to reach out. I'd be more than happy to answer those and share with you. I hope this has helped show you, though, how you can leverage AI tools like ChatGPT and Claude. Even though we didn't use that, you could use the same prompts in Claude. Or you could even try Google Bard, although currently as I do this, I don't have the confidence it would do nearly as good a job. Um, and then uh, using perplexity to get that information. So hopefully valuable. If you have any questions, please let me know and make it a great day.